Kelly Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Or that guy can enunciate. Can he? Channeling <laughs> yeah. Hour of Enlightenment. Well, it's better than, than, you know, mumbling like I do sometimes. Anyway, guys, uh, you guys, most of you have embarked on a journey to spiritual awareness, right? And you probably had to deal with a lot of haters, you know, these big skeptics who have very closed minds of the uber religions of any religion, really. Um, and, you know, that I, I've had so many different um, haters and trolls give me such horrible comments and, and stuff. And, you know, I, I stopped reading them. It's just ridiculous. It's hurtful. But it's all ego and fear-based and narcissistic and even when people won't allow me to ha- express my own opinion and they start hating on me really why why can i have you could have your opinion but i can't have mine really i can't express my opinion seriously now it'd be different if i was saying i got this opinion and yours sucks but that's never the case anyway maybe eric can help us because we are going through this same thing that we went through centuries ago when people thought the earth was flat and then Galileo said it was round and they went all ape shit on him. So I think they even threw him in prison. I can't remember, but look, guess what? The earth is round. So uh, yeah. anyway, so we're going to have Eric uh, talk a little bit with the, his wonderful voice, uh, Jen- Jennifer uh, Doran, and I'll tell you how to get in touch with her if you want. And then we'll take calls from listeners. So all right. I love you, baby. Oh, I love you too. Hey, everybody. Um, so, yeah, what Eric is saying about skeptics is it doesn't really matter what you're talking about. There's going to be people who are skeptical. It, it creates the balance, and we need that balance here. We need the, mm. you know, the dark and the light, the black and the white, whatever it is. We need we need that contrast here. Um, so he says, believe it or not, they do serve a purpose. Um, and he says, actually, on those occasions where you can convince skeptics that, hey, you know, what you thought maybe isn't exactly true, that that's an even stronger believer. It's a bigger deal than just talking to somebody who kind of believes the same thing you do. And then it's like, yeah, okay, it, it's like it's a, more of a challenge, so it's more of a reward. Um, <laughs> what, oh, what yeah, but that's so what we need. Try. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, I, I don't oh, even yeah. try to well, proselytize. There's no, I mean, I, I don't. It's not my job to to cram things into their minds or to their belief system. It, if they ask me, exactly if it's solicited, fine. But I will no heck no. They have their own path. They need to follow it, just like I had to follow mine. Yes, but see, <laughs> boy, he's funny because what he says is that you have through the work that you're doing here, even though you're not trying to you have reached people who are skeptical and you have changed their uh, feelings and stuff uh, on it. Um, oh, that's you're true. not even aware of it. Yeah. You're not even aware of it. So yeah. If it's somebody who's skeptic comes up to you and says, well, prove this to me. It's like, well, no, I don't, I don't have time for that, you know? So, but he says you, you've um, reached so many skeptical people um, and, and changed their minds yeah. and opened their eyes to this possibility. Mm. That's um, good. And I'm sure you have too. And, so, but, uh, so what if somebody comes hating on us, like hateful comments or hateful emails or hateful private messages? What do we do, Eric? Keep like, well, the, those listening in the audience, it. Jennifer, yeah. just don't pay attention. Uh, yeah. Sometimes yes, I do I'm slip sorry, up and say, was... you talk to your, you can't get your mouth with, uh, with that same mouth, things like that. But I try, I, I don't do that. Yes, well, he. About it. He literally said to me, and then he had a big grin on his face, you turn the other cheek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know what cheek he's talking about then, Eric. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he just, it's just kind of funny. But, no, he said that's really all that you can do because uh, when people – okay. He says when people get in your face like that and they and they spread the negativity and they're, and they're being hateful – he said the more that you give to it, the more it feeds that energy. Even oh, if you're yeah. just trying to convince them about how rude they're being or you're just feeding that energy. He said the best thing to do, especially when people are crossing the line into hurtful, hateful stuff, is you ignore it. You mm-hmm. act like you don't even see it. 
Um, you yeah. give it no attention. Um, well, what about and, sending and them uh, love and light? What about sending them love and light? Yeah, you, you can absolutely do that. Um, you just don't tell them you're doing it. He said, you know, oh, no. you just don't oh, God, tell no. them. You just, you just oh, do God. it and, and, and ignore them. And that kills the energy right there that stops that mm-hmm. energy at least from affecting you and, and, and your immediate, you know, um, people like, you know, for instance, on the blog and stuff, if, if somebody's writing negative and, and it goes and other people get involved in it and it, you know, maybe it puts other people in a bad mood or it makes people feel anxious. But if you just stop it and end it right there, you can even delete the comment, block the person, whatever it is, it stops it, you know, then they would have to move on to somebody else. And if everybody did that, eventually they would just keep it to themselves. Um, I know. But Jojo you know, Bean, I hope you're listening. I had to block her. Yeah. Jojo yeah. Bean, she was horrible. Yeah. I know who oh she is, God. too. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Notorious. Yes. Uh, yeah. But no, he said I think he's, it, you know, that is, oh, he's saying that's like an extreme, but he said, you know, believe it or not, skeptics, there's different levels of skeptics. Um, oh, yeah. And a lot of times in regards to this, uh, you know, spirituality and, and, and the other side and stuff, a lot of times skeptics want to believe. Uh, if they're coming around, and I don't, this is me, Jennifer, I worked in a spiritual town, and we would have mm-hmm. skeptics come in, and but you just knew, like, if you're that skeptical, you're not even looking at this kind of stuff. You're just, mm. you know, whatever, not paying it any attention. So a lot of times skeptics just want some sort of experience. Mm-hmm. And and I have read for skeptics. There are some skeptics that I'll say, you know, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to waste my time. But there have been other skeptics where it's like, no, do the reading for them. And when they have that experience, they're diehard believers. And it does change wow. their life. You know what um, I think? I, I think those kind of uh, skeptics are the ones that uh, are scared to think yes. that it's all true, only to have uh, to, yes. to to find out it's a bunch of nonsense. Just like I went through that, because they have a yes. very a lot of emotional attachment to whether it's true or not. So yes. fear and involved. That, as you were saying that Eric said they're afraid. They're afraid. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like, like, um, yeah, I, was like you're... I was afraid to believe you still lived on, Eric, because. You know, then what if I really believed it, and then all of a sudden I found out definitely that it was a bunch of bull crap? That would be like losing. Then you're all even over more again. disappointed, more Ever. devastated. Yeah, devastated. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, and and so the, and then he says there's also some skeptics who just need to experience something for themselves that they can't explain. Um, so seeing, you know, seeing a ghost. Um, you know, have it just, there's some skeptics who that's what they need. They just need to experience something for themselves. It's not that they don't mm-hmm. want to believe, but until they see something, experience something, feel something, they can't yeah. do it. Not that they don't want to. He said they just, sometimes they just can't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's too logical brain. Um, well, and, and also if they have that dense energy of expectation, then spirits yeah. are not going to be able to like, lower their vibration down to that density and, uh, you know, prove that they exist. Yeah. And, and the other thing that he's saying, as you're saying that is that sometimes people have experiences, but then they think it's wishful thinking and and they're still skeptical, even if they've had an experience or there's something Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And it's like, well, no, I'm just making that up or I'm just imagining or it's just wishful thinking. So uh, if if you're a skeptic out there who kind of falls into that category, the quicker that you can just accept it and thank the energy for coming, the quicker you'll kind of get over that feeling of like, well, no, I don't know. I probably just was seeing things or, you know, imagining it or uh, whatever. That that energy will make it take longer for you, for sure. Well, what, what convinced me, I mean, we had like blenders that were unplugged go off and other appliances. Devil turn, mm-hmm. water faucets go all the way on. Eric called us on the uh, on the phone. I saw him jumping around my bed and stuff like that. But then time would pass and doubts would creep in. It was not until somebody pointed me out to our Jesus interview, which was like a year and a half earlier, that uh, when I heard his voice and it was recorded mm-hmm. and I knew that was my son. I know my I know Eric's voice. I'm his mother, and yeah. then having it evaluated and 
finding out by the sound uh, pros that it wasn't a human voice. Uh, that did it for me. That mm-hmm. put me at 100% forever. So a lot of people, I guess, need something like that. So maybe EVPs are a good way because it's yeah. recorded. You can go back to it. It's not like, well, did I remember it this way? Did that airsoft BB uh, materialize at the um, – Right. Lots of things like that. You have it. Yeah, it's, and you can analyze it's it. different. He said it's different for different people. He said, you know, some people, you know, just – a cardinal going by is enough for them to believe that, hey, that's my loved one. They said before they died they were going to send cardinals, oh, and yeah. that's enough. And other and yeah. other people, they might have had their loved one say, I'm going to send cardinals, and, you know, they come out, and there's 50 cardinals on their car, and mm. it's like, no, I don't know. You know, so it just – it's okay. person to, to person, and it's different things. It's, he says, you know, somebody might uh, – you know, like the faces that, you know, that show up. You know, like you, there's a spot on the yeah. floor, and it looks like – you know, it looks like a, that might do it for somebody or an EVP might mm-hmm. do it for somebody um, or a dream, you know, where, where somebody comes to, to you in a dream. It's just each individual, like, thing that gets them to accept it. Uh, but he said, you know, right. not everybody's going to accept it here. It's just not going to happen. Um, well, what about the really hard, closed-off skeptics who absolutely refuse to believe uh, that well, the things that we believe in? And that probably includes the religious who think that we're channeling the devil, talking to the devil, and all yes. that kind of stuff. Why are they the way they are? What What do they gain from? I mean, Jesus was a medium. Come on, and he believed in yeah. reincarnation until that was taken out of the Bible. Right. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, what Eric is saying is that really part of that truly is for our benefit, <laughs> um, oh. for the balance. We need, just like we have the, the people who believe everything, just everything's a sign, our loved ones are off, you know, and, and they see it all the time. They're seeing 300 signs a day. We have those people. He said you also need to have the people who don't believe in anything. Um, Why? They Why do we the, need that? Uh, well, for the earthly experience. We've got to, oh, okay. here. We're okay. here. We are meant to experience the full range of emotions, mm-hmm. um, from the most elated, most delightful, to the most horrific, most negative. And and so yeah. we need all kinds of people with all kinds of beliefs here to create that scenario. Um, uh, you know, on the other side, he said those those people who are skeptics or uh, who don't believe in any other side at all, or he said it doesn't matter once they've died. Um, then they come back over here and they have, you know, probably fulfilled what they had come to do, or at least, yeah. you know, in part. Um, yeah. So exactly. it doesn't matter what they believe here, they still get to go over there. <laughs> but for us here, having to deal with them, he said, you know, it's just, it's a lower level energy. Um, yeah. They think that they're doing the right thing. They, you know, they they think that they're, the words that they're speaking are true. Um, but he said the, and you know, and the more energy that you from, give to it. Yeah. So yeah. they're saving people from the hoaxes and the frauds and stuff like that, right? That's a, and the, the devil. The, that kind yes. of, and the devil. So it's a kind of a righteous position that they take. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have, I have personally been in a store, in, out in public in a store, and was talking to a customer, and another customer overheard us and came and stood right next to me and started praying over me. Oh God! And, I, and and actually, I just didn't do anything. I you know I didn't. I well, I did say. I said, "Are you, are you praying over me?" And she said, "Yes, I am." And the woman I had been talking to stepped in and was like, "You leave her alone. She's not, you know, she's not bothering you. You leave her alone." And God. I didn't say anything more. And I just you know kind of let it bl- brush off of me because I thought you know that has nothing to do with me and what I do and who I am. That has everything to do with her. So I didn't own it personally. And Eric said that's that's actually yeah. good because that's what a lot of people do is they own that behavior like it's theirs. Um, right. and, and so they feel right. the need to defend and to fight and um, because they feel like they're they're protecting their beliefs. Um, okay. All right. So I think okay. if we take, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, calls from listeners, uh, I have a yeah. advice for you. I want you to go to every single mean ass skeptic out there wait to their sleep and then get like one inch over their face 
And when they open their eyes, go, I would love that. That'd be yeah. funny. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, Eric, any last words? Yeah, he says, just just do you. Uh, for all those people out there who are trying to spread the light and the love, you just keep doing that and move on past the skeptics and the haters. And, oh, I and love just that. What, you know, don't engage as much as you can. Just don't engage with them because the people who need your message will get it. So don't yep. waste time trying to give it to somebody who doesn't want it. <clears throat> yeah, you do you. I love that. You do you. And let people yep. be who they are. I love that one, too. All right. I'm yeah, ready to take a call. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm ready to take a call. How about you, Jennifer? And how about you, Eric? Yep. Absolutely. All right. Good deal. Our first one is from area code. I know local to Houston. Uh, 832 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Who's this? Uh, hi, Elizabeth. this is Elizabeth. Oh, yes. the one who I, drew that beautiful portrait of Eric. The artist. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. The artist. Yes. Yeah, I knew as soon as I heard the voice, Eric said, oh, that's the artist. That's the artist. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Oh, All awesome. right. Elizabeth, uh, yes. what do you have to ask Eric? Yes, I have a, a concern. Um, uh, My mom has acid reflux and... um. And and I think part of it is psychological. She has weird stomach things and weird habits about food. And I'm uh, flattered that I started crying because I didn't know what what else to do. What else? How can I help her? And I'm a person that doesn't want to get helped. Um, like, like psychologically, it's impossible. So I just wonder what's really up with her, and how can I help her? Okay, so Erica says a few things. When you when you said you were worried, Eric said you have a lot of worries. You ha- you spend a lot of time worrying. Um, yeah. In, in regards to this, yeah, yeah, he says pay attention to how much energy you put into worrying. Worrying doesn't change anything. It just ruins your time. Um, you know, of, in life, worrying doesn't doesn't stop, prevent, fix anything. Um, but as far as the situation with your mother, yes, she, she, he says she needs to change some of her habits to fix this, but if she doesn't want to, he says, there's nothing you can do to, to make, you can't fix this for her. What's wrong with her? Does Uh, she have probiotics? Does she have kombucha? Does she have, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the, the, uh, H. pylori, um, some parasite? It's the type of food she's eating, the amount of food, the time. Of day, there there's a lot going on. This is it acid reflux. There's the um, uh, like GERD. Is it is that is that acid reflux? Yeah. What's that? Yes. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. The, this is what it is, reflux. but it has to do with her habits. It has so, to do with her habits and what she's eating. So what? What yeah. does she? Give me five things or four things that she needs to do right now that would help. Ah. Uh, Change her diet. To what? Change her yeah. exercise. Well, I feel what, like there's, uh, he's saying there's too much yeah. food. There's too okay. much food. Okay. Yes, there uh, is too much food. It's too late in the day. Um, she, well, she, she eats out of emotion. She is an emotional eater. Um, yes. So we've got to figure out the source of why we're why we turn to food. To, to, but if she's not willing to do any of this, then you just have to kind of watch this spiral. Um, she could, she could, is she even taking medicine? Eric says she needs medication. It, does she even do a consistent medication for this? Cause she should. No, because she says that is not working and immediately if I tell her it, it takes weeks to work, maybe two weeks and she, she wants something immediate and that's yeah. not possible. <clears throat> Some people just want to suffer in some way. Yeah. Be destructive. He he said yeah. she's she's a little destructive yeah. and, and kind of likes that. Um does she do she's it comfortable for, there again? Does she do it to to get attention or anything or there is um, yeah, does. there is a bit Yeah, there's a bit of that with the emotional aspect here. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, there's a bit of a victim-y aspect here is what yeah. Eric is saying. Uh, well, that victim role of... This? Yeah. What is at the root of her emotional problem? Is it this life, another life? Um, um, childhood. Childhood from this life um, is where it stems yeah. from loss. Yeah. Um, but Eric's telling me she's not willing to do anything to fix this, really. She's not really, she just keeps yeah. doing what she does and com- and then complains about it. So there's really nothing so, you can do. Yeah, so you could, Eric says you could tell her, look at from it. Eric, you just disconnect from Eric it. Eric just said what you can do, yeah, is tell her, look, if you're not going to do something to fix this, I don't want to hear you complain about it. Mm. So... Um, that's yeah. the only thing that you can really do. If you're not going to do it, if you're not going to fix it, I don't want to hear about it. Good for you. Good. That is okay. perfect. All right, Elizabeth. And thank yes. you for the uh You guys need to check out my last blog post because I put all her information. If you want, I, mean, I showed the picture. If you want her to draw a masterpiece for you of your deceased loved one or anybody, really, you can a portrait of yourself. It's just uncanny. When I opened up the envelope and saw that picture, my jaw dropped. It's uh, what, uh, um, wow. What Eric is what Eric is saying about it is that that she that you give light to the portrait. Like you do. You know, some people can draw can, a picture of a person, yeah. but he but there's life in in the in the pictures that you draw. Yes, there was something different. Oh, thank just, you. Yeah. So that's awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. See you, Lisa. I mean, thank you, Lisa, for the compliments. Thank you so much. See you, Pat. See you Good later. Luck. Bye. Bye. She should go, maybe she can go to the um, society thing in October. She's local, so it'd be a pretty easy thing yeah. to do. Okay, let's yep. take somebody from the, um, let's see, what is this? The 678 area code. Hi there. How are you? Hi, Elisa. Hi, Jennifer. Hey. Hi, Eric. Hey. Uh, this is Jim from Marietta, but I have a lovely family of three visiting us from Macau, China. And ah, I told okay. them about the Channeling Eric blog. And mm-hmm. uh, the young man by the name of Aiden had a question for Eric. All right. Fire sure. away. It's fire away, Aiden. Um, I'm just wondering, um, since I'm going to college in the U.S., Right. Uh-huh. Um, I yep. want to know your opinion on which state I would be going to in my future. Uh, New York is what he said. <laughs> ah, New York. Like upstate That's kind of funny how or, or Manhattan. They're actually from or? New York originally. Oh. Oh, okay. are you? They're actually, actually from <laughs> New York. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so. Well, you might be going back there then. Um, but he, I, I will tell you, he says this is a free will decision, though. You will have some free will. Um, you'll have options. Uh, but but New, York is, New York is a good option for you. And, and one last thing, uh, Jennifer, or Eric. Um, you know I asked you to prank them, right? And they said it was okay. So have at it if you want to. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, beware, <laughs> beware what you wish for. Look yeah, out have fun with yeah. Eric. Eric will have fun with you. You yes. have fun with him. All right. Yes. Thanks for calling, Jim. Thanks a lot. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Okay, have to. Good luck, Aiden. Uh, Elisa, do you mind? Do you mind if I quickly share a story about asking Eric to, to you know? Oh yeah. Do yeah, something. Sure. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. so. Um, so one time I had asked Eric, like, I just want to, like, I want you to do something, you know, I, I just, I want to know you're around. And the whole night he was naked in my dreams. <laughs> he just oh, kept showing no. up nude in my dreams. I was like, I woke oh. up in the morning. I was like, okay, I, I will. <laughs> you better be more specific next time. Be more specific on what you want from him, guys. Oh, yes. that is so yes. funny. Oh, oh gosh, he'll never be the same. Mm, it was mm, hilarious. Mm. <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> that's funny. All right, got somebody from the 540 area code. Hi there. How's it going? You hear me? 540-828. Are you there? 
Okay, we'll go on to the next one. Somebody from the from the five eight six area code. Hi there. Hi, it's me, Sean. How are you guys doing? Hi, fine. How are you doing? Good. Um, just have some hopefully quick questions. I wanted to know: um, Is my um, twin flame on the other side who I think it is? And then um, there's like a guy in my life who's like in and out. So I wanted to know that anything with him, or should I just leave it alone? And then if I have Mm-mm. a soulmate this lifetime. Wait, okay. did you call no, about this the, guy the before? Guy... Wait, did you call about this guy before, uh-huh. right? You did you call about this guy no, before? No, no, no. Okay, okay. No, it. no, no, no. I didn't. Okay. Okay. So, so the guy who's in and out right now in your life currently, uh huh. This will eventually end. Uh, this is not like a soulmate connection. This is not this is a little more trouble than it's worth, is what Eric is saying. Oh, boy. Um, so when you're ready to just be done with this, be done with this. Although he says it might still be a little bit longer because there is some fun there. Um, so, uh, but, but no, this is ultimately, he said, this is not going anywhere. Um, and uh, yes, he said there, it, not everybody gets to have a romantic relationship with a soulmate. Um, he says that you will, uh, Oh, good. It might be a little. It might be a little longer, though. Okay, I, Eric says he's not right around the corner. Okay, how long do you um, think? So, well, they're not good with time over there. They're really not. Uh, but we're we're talking a few right. years. Okay, a, a few years. Okay, so just make fine. sure you don't settle. Eric says don't settle. Oh God, no. Yeah, I'm not gonna settle. I'm like no, she does. Yeah. Um, and then about the twin flame, is it um, who I think it is on the other side? Yes. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm laughing, but yes, I don't mean to laugh, but there's something funny about about um, that guy, that that person who it was. Did, did, was no. he funny? You said was he funny? Uh, yeah, or it just makes me laugh. Like his energy just made me laugh when he came in. Yes. I I don't know. I think his um I got a reading before and he came in. It was from a past lifetime. So, oh. you know, of course I've never met him, but since he came through, oh, you I was like, you haven't I wonder met if he's here. my twin flame. Right. Yeah, yeah. He just has such a funny energy to me. Um, do you know his name? Do, do you have a name that you call him? You don't have to say it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, talk to him. Um, he, he's one that can kind of mess with you a little bit. Um, not to the extent that Eric does like the practical jokes and stuff, but he can kind of mess with you a bit, like make you be missing a p- paper or, you know, missing one of your shoes or something. Um, but yeah, better that you don't meet a twin flame in this lifetime. That's, that's better for you. That was a rough, uh, connection. Tumultuous. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right, let's see the the 540 area code is back on. Hi there. Yeah, hello. Oh, we tried can to you hear, hear me? You yes, now I can hear you. How okay. you doing? I, I don't know why you couldn't hear me before. Anyway, I'm sorry. No. Um, uh, um, I'm so glad I got on. Um, my brother, Hank, um, mm-hmm. is was admitted to the hospital last night locally, mm-hmm. And um, for several months, he has had that C. difficile, you know, oh, yeah. bacteria. Mm-hmm. And um, it seems to have gotten worse. And, mm-hmm. you know, between his weird wife and the doctors blowing it off as, you know, a side effect of drugs or something, uh, oh, the diarrhea, yeah. um, it's been dragged on. And I just wondered. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, wait, he's po- definitely positive for C. diff? Yeah, they, um, okay. yeah. Um, he needs, and he I just needs wonder, a poop enema. Now poop enema. They actually do give fecal enemas. That will bring them out. I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just wondered, is he going to be all right? And what's it going to take? Uh, does he have anything um, else wrong with him? Also, I okay. Don't know. So here's what Eric is saying. He's, Eric, when you first got on and said your brother Eric said it's very serious. Um, yeah. It's very, it's very serious. Uh-huh. Um, so is this? I don't know. I personally don't know what this is. Is this some sort of an infection? It, yeah, yes. in the um, intestines. Okay. Yeah. 
It's one of those okay, super bugs. Okay, so I keep bugs. hearing infection, infection, infection. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wasn't sure if this was the infection or if there was some other infection. Um, they, the only thing is that we need to make sure, Eric says, you need to make sure that you have somebody who's advocating for them there because the likelihood of them trying to maybe get him out of the hospital before he should yeah. is definitely high. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so if they're saying, oh, okay, he's going to be going home, make sure that he feels like he can go home. It's going to be too soon. He'll need to stay longer whenever they, whenever they say he can go home. But this is pretty serious. Yeah. Um, they say he's down to about 80 pounds and he's so oh weak. He has to walk with a quad cane and he falls. And yeah. You know, his uh, wife you know, is part okay. of the problem. I'm going to use a doctor. He needs total uh, um, parental nutrition. And we're mm-hmm. not feeding by mouth. But he needs it by vein. P N. Oh, okay. Number one. Number two. You mean not not a it. not a um, a stomach plug or whatever they call it. No, no. I mean he oh. he'll just have more diarrhea. Uh-huh. Number two, yeah. two. He needs um, an infectious disease expert and probably a fecal mm-hmm. enema. So those three things. Is there anything else with him besides the C diff, Eric? Um. That you can see. <sighs> yes, but this is, he said yes. There is other stuff going on, but this is the big thing right now. Okay. Um, the, the the next thing that Eric is telling me is that his will, like his oh. will to keep yeah. going, is waning. Okay. Mm. Um. So his his mood, his temperament, his you know, he this is suffering a bit too, and and yeah. that is the next thing on the list that Eric is saying is a big concern. Okay. Right, so it's this you need to get with him and say, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make sure you get TPN. We're going to get an eye infectious disease. Give him hope. We'll take yeah, it. We're going yeah. to get you an infectious disease expert, mm-hmm. dude, and he's probably going to do this and the other thing, like a fecal enema. Uh-huh. This is going to be awesome. You're going to be fine. You're going to gain weight. You feel mm-hmm. better. You know, when you are 80 pounds, you feel like crap. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. then they to the mental and emotional state. So yeah. anyway, will you please be the squeaky wheel? And yeah. fight okay. Fight. Be yeah, I, I can do that. Medically, I can advocate for it. But, uh, good. Good. If, it, if his wife will ass. let me. She, she kind of keeps no, no, me no. and my sister away from him. No, you talk to the doctors and uh, mm-hmm. the stuff. Go read about yeah. Clostridia difficile, okay? You come yeah. prepared and you fight mm-hmm. for this guy. You bypass his wife and you just go to the doctor and say here is what needs to be done if, if you don't mm-hmm. do this it's got to be negligence on your part scare him a little bit yep. okay yeah okay <sighs> we'll do oh, God. doctors so. all right and I know. Yeah. all right okay, Good luck. Well, Keep us let us know next week okay i will okay thank you so much you bet okay. Good luck. Mm-hmm. to be an advocate for somebody who is too weak to do it on their own Yes. Oh, oh. oh boy, I got stories. Uh, all right, we're talking to somebody from the N seven zero area code. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Who are we speaking with? <laughs> this is Anybody Sherry. There? Oh hi. Hello. Is it hi. Sherry? Is it? Yes. Sherry, oh. and I'd like to thank you all for what you do. Oh, you bring a lot you. of enlightenment oh, to many. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, my question is for Eric. Um, my question is I lost my spouse a year ago tomorrow. Mm. And I'm so I sorry. wanted to know. Well, thank you. And uh, I wanted to know we were twin flames. That's one of my mm. questions. Mm. And with her passing at this time, was it her time to go as her contract? Yeah. yeah, unavoidable. He said the passing was unavoidable. Okay. Uh, were, they, so, were they twin yeah. flames? You know, it's, it's what he's saying, it was, it was more of a soulmate connection. The soulmate connection and the twin flame connection are a bit different. Um, and, and, and he says this is more of a soulmate connection than a twin flame connection. Can we bring her in uh, for yeah. a message? What's her first name? Lynn. Lynn. Can we bring I, Lynn in yeah. for a message? 
Um, yeah, she, I just she puts a big smile on my face. Oh. Um, and, and yeah, this, she could not help but to leave you at this time. And um, she, um, she says you're doing well without her, uh, better than you thought you could. Did you not think you would survive this? No, I did not. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and and she just says, "Look at you, you 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 survive. Um, you just have to keep going. You have more work to do." Okay, and my request is make sure she's in the front line when it's my turn. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, what, what is uh, the work that needs to be done still? Oh boy. Um, I mean, just the main thing. Okay. Whatever. The, well, the main, that's tough. Um, there's something here to do with forgiveness. You're still working on forgiveness. Um, so whether it's getting or giving forgiveness, forgiveness is still something you're working on. Um, is that, do you understand that? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, this I do understand. All right. Okay. Um, so there's still more to do there. Uh, there's more to do elsewhere too. You know, there's, that's not just the only thing that you're here to work on, um, but you're just right. not done yet. And that's one of the things that you're still kind of working with. Mm. Why? Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Sending Good luck to you. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. And Eric, feel free to prank me anytime. Oh God, you better be <laughs> careful what you wish for. <laughs> he will. Yeah. He will. Or, I read your book and it was talking about that in there. And wonderful book. I'm waiting for the next one. Oh God, I don't know if I have one in me. Golly, but yeah, <laughs> his book is amazing. His, I swear, it, yeah. it healed. It helped to heal me so much. I mean, the first few chapters was kind of rough for me, but boy, it just it's amazing. Really great book. I I was just a transcriber, so I'm not bragging. All right, well, thank you for well, coming thank in. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Bye-bye. You bet, sweetie. Bye. So you guys, yeah, check out My Life After Death, a memoir from heaven. It's just amazing. Oh, okay, we have somebody from the 505 area code. How you doing? Hi, Lisa. This is Christina. Hi, Christina. Hi. Um, hi, Jennifer. Um, you once told me I hi. had a lot of work to do on myself, and that's why... You know, you and another one of Eric's medium said I wasn't getting my soulmate. And so I thought it was me having to work on myself. So I forgave my narcissist mother. I loved her. I allowed her back into my life. But I'm yeah. noticing that she's still seeping back into the negativity. So I thought maybe I need yeah. to, okay, maybe that wasn't it. Maybe the forgiveness or know. loving her was, wasn't love, you know, wasn't the part of what I was supposed to work on. So I'm confused. What is it I need okay, to do? Okay, so see... Forgiving somebody does not mean that you have to allow them back into your life. Okay. Mm. Um, because, it, see, it, 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 what Eric is saying is if, if you forgive her and let go of it, then, then you just move on. You know, you move on, you heal from it. But, but by forgiving her and letting her back in, you're replaying that same scenario again. She has not made any progress as far as her mm. narcissistic behavior. Um, yeah. so you're, yeah, you're going to fall right back into the same thing, but yes, you can forgive somebody and heal from an issue without ever having to put yourself back in the situation again. Well, is there any yeah, way does that, that makes sense? A, is there? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was worried about. Cause I thought that's what it was for me to work on, to allow her yeah. to be back in my life. But when I noticed yeah. the narcissist system start coming back up, I said, oh, no, yes. she's still that way. She hasn't learned, so yes. maybe that yes. wasn't what I was supposed to work on. So what is it I'm supposed to work on to get my soulmate to come in? Well, just you uh, forgave her, but you need to not let her back in, maybe. But I don't know. What else? Yeah. Yeah. Um I, I well, uh, quite frankly, he's saying that that's not that's not done. The the, the forgiveness is not done there because the, whatever has happened since has just brought back up that same disappointment, that same anger. Um, there's not not been true forgiveness here, 
it, and that happens. He said that happens to us as humans. We think we've dealt with something, and we think I know we've I'm, dealing with with yeah, I'm dealing with that. I'm dealing with that. And it slaps us yeah. in the face. Yes. Mm. Um. Yeah. So, I really you just keep working on your forgiveness, but but without allowing her back in. Okay, um, that's what I need to know because like, she's not any different. Okay. That's what I was well, worried about. Like Elisa says, we think we forgive her, and I thought I did, but mm-hmm. when I noticed that she was doing the same thing, all that hurt came back up, and I'm all like, that I, anger, you know, she's, yep, all yes. that stuff came back up. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. So and, and, and you I, know, I'll tell you, Eric is saying that wasn't a bad thing. It, this okay. isn't a bad thing. It might feel like a setback. It might feel, but this is part of the process because see, you thought you had dealt with it. But then it's like, boom, nope, it's still all there in the recesses of your subconscious. So mm. now you know, okay, this is not the way to deal with it. I've got to explore other ways of uh, letting that go. And, and there, the, he, he's saying there's still a lot of wishful thinking on your part of what you wish your mother-daughter relationship had been. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, he says you have to live in the reality of what it was. That's where you start to heal from is the reality of what it is now that reality is that you have a mother who has mental illness issues who maybe wasn't able to love you the way that you wanted to be loved not that you didn't deserve it not that you didn't deserve to be loved that way and you shouldn't have been loved that way but you did not have a mother capable of it so he said you have to really look at the reality of what your relationship was without trying to sugarcoat it without letting any of your wishful thinking in and that's where you go from and feel compassion for her because she suffers Mental illness, and that's no fun. But also to stand back and look at, all right, what did I learn from this? What value, what, mm-hmm. where's the value from our past together? And there always is, like with my uh, parents, I learned from the abuse. I learned how to be assertive. I learned how to be more nurturing and compassionate. And I'm so grateful for that, for those lessons. It, it, yeah, it made, I think it made me a better person. So you need to maybe reflect and, and find out, all right, what positive did I get from this whole thing? Because there always yeah. is value in every experience, the, the good ones and the quote unquote bad ones. And then that's yeah. when you can be grateful for it and then let go, surrender. Yeah. All right, thanks for calling. Now, he is, Eric, is, oh, Eric is saying one more thing about, about this, <laughs> this particular question and stuff. He says the trouble with being human is that as humans, we want what it is we want, and we, and we want it now. Um, mm. But he's saying that whenever your soulmate shows up, whether it's a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, whenever that happens, it will have been worth the wait. Okay? Yeah. So, oh, yes, it may not be in the timing that you want it, but it will be worth the wait, and he says that is a promise. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. All right. Thank thanks you for calling. so much. Thank you, Lisa. You betcha. Bye. Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye. Okay. Um, let's see. We have somebody from the 773 area code. Hi there. How are you? Hello. Hello. Hi, Lisa. Are How are you? I'm fine. Who are we speaking with? Teresa. Hi, Elisa. Yeah. It's good to hear your voice. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Eric. Hello. Eric, Eric. Oh, hello. I finally got through Tuesday before last when we saw oh. you, you guys talking about hopeless and you said 773 and I kept saying, hello, hello, hello. You couldn't hear me, but I can hear you. Oh. And then this past Tuesday, we, everyone was talking about the third eye and I was listening to it and then I was listening to the uh, the callers and the call just dropped. Eric, what oh, happened? No. Why that was happening to me? What was going on? Was it a yeah. prank or was it you something better, going yeah. on in my life? All right, you better explain yourself. <laughs> yeah, oh. it's just that, you know, but messing with the technology and fooling around with the technology, oh. they like to do that. Oh, it was, and they, and they they can. <laughs> oh, I took that person. Well, I'm calling because <laughs> oh, boy, I'm calling all it. I mean, I'm listening all the time. Uh, Eric, I love you. I love you, Lisa. Um, my brain has been so full. My brain been full with so many things, so many things. You know, yesterday I sat in the park and I started talking to the trees. Do they hear me, Eric? Yeah, I didn't care. I didn't care. 
<laughs> I didn't care if yes. somebody was uh, looking at me. I didn't care about yes. nothing. I want to talk to the trees. You know, oh, it's an exchange so my, of energy. Yes. Mm-hmm. My brain been so full. What can I do to keep my brain from not being so full? So many things. I've been dealing with domestic, domestic with my ex, where he tried to run me down in my car. Um, oh, yeah. And then I was going to court for there. Then I was able to move, relocate, and then I'm dealing with so many things. I just want to run, run, run. I'm so nice. I'm too nice. I don't know when to stop being nice. I'm, yes. I feel bad when I say oh. no to someone. What can I do, oh Eric? What I can know. I do? I know how you feel. Yes. You give away all he your says, emotions. It is. He says, huh? he says your mind is like a hamster running, running, running on a wheel. Just running, running, running. <laughs> Um, it's like, it's like crazy up in there. Not literally crazy, but like you said, it's so I know, I know. hectic. See, but what he said is that you've trained your brain to think like this. You, you, I did? You, he's like, you're in fighter. Yeah. You're in fight or flight all the time. Fight or flight all the time. Um, what you're always do waiting for that? something. That you have to hmm. consciously quiet your mind, work on meditation. Even if you can only get it for 30 seconds. To quiet I, your mind. I've it's been working you're gonna on have to, Okay. You gotta, okay. Okay. Yep, okay. You more, 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 it. more. You keep doing it. And should she listen oh. online? Start, should, should she? Yes, I'll be on YouTube and I beat up on myself oh, when yeah. I miss my meditation. I beat up on myself. Okay. I, I didn't do it today. I'd be so busy and I'm yeah. like, I need to do my meditation. Well, don't then be that let that go. Still. Don't beat yeah. up on yourself. But he also yeah. said, Another thing for you to do, and and I want you to really listen, he said. Okay, really listen to this. I am. I take am. a breath. Take okay. a breath before you speak. Ooh. Take a breath. Oh, I talk too fast and too much. I need to slap yes. myself sometimes. Shut up. Yes. Shut <laughs> you on my job. Oh my God, I try to take care of everybody me. on my job. I try to take care of everybody on my job. Yes. It's a nursing home, and I feel bad because I can't take care of everybody, and I see how people being mistreated. And I feel so bad. I don't know what to do. You know what he just showed me? This is so hilarious. What he just showed me (laughs) is, do you guys remember the show, The Beverly Hillbillies? Oh, yeah. With the truck, and the truck was all loaded up. He said, yeah, yeah, the Beverly Hillbillies. Start on yourself. (laughs) Yeah. Write this down if you have a pen and paper. Take a breath before you speak. Get to practicing that. It's going to help quiet your mind. Take a breath before I speak. Slow down. Slow yep. down your okay. speech yep. because that will help slow down your mind. Talk, yep. you know, sl- more slowly. And, okay, uh, and take a breath before I speak. You've got to retrain your brain. Okay. You've got to retrain your brain to slow down. Okay. Yeah. One more thing. Do I have to worry about my ex coming to hunt me again? I mean, stalking me? I'm just concerned about that, too. Oh. You don't have to worry about anything. Okay. okay. Worry. Okay. Worry is a waste of time. Okay. Uh, so the more I do. I need to you practice. Put into, yeah, the more energy you put into worrying about something, if you believe in manifesting, the more energy you put into worrying and obsessing and, and fearing, that's what you're going to see. Um, yeah. Salt comes okay. You know, okay. Is there a chance okay. of a bad night that the, yeah. that the ex Don't is going to cause it. stress for you? Yeah. But uh, run you down? No. No. Just don't even worry about him. Okay, great, think great. I'm not going to worry. I said I can't wait to start the air. Okay, yeah, okay. The, oh. Definitely think the thoughts you want to manifest, girl. I mean, if you want to yeah. manifest, I mean, send him. Oh, it's been life, happening. Whatever. I've been medicine fest, manifesting certain things. It's been coming to me. I need to practice practice on manifesting yeah. something positive. Stop thinking well, negative, Teresa. Make sure you're Teresa. not manifesting negative stuff. Yeah, you, if you're going to it, it, it comes come to my mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Breathe. All right. Breathe. Breathe before you, you talk. Oh, thank you so much. Call, call next right. week too. Yeah. Okay, babe. Okay, I will. Thank you, Lisa. Eric, you Jennifer, best, thank you Love guys. You. <laughs> Love you too. Bye bye. Good luck. <laughs> bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. She's great. All right, got somebody from the four one four area code, and I recognize it. So I bet it's Aaron. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing, Lisa? Can you freaking believe I remember your freaking number? And I never remember <laughs> anything. That is so weird. But I don't know. What can I say? Miracle I've, I've called in enough. <laughs> so uh, what you got for us today? I, uh, 
Well, um, I just have a question, really. I've, I've had three careers, and, and I was in the Army. I was an electrician, and then I had to go to school later in life to become a computer guy. And then I got medically um, retired. So mm-hmm. I'm in my 50s, I just was wondering if Eric could give me a hint on what's coming, if, there's, if, if I'm just going to be sitting in this recliner for the next 30 years. Uh, what he says is that's a choice. So, no, you don't have to just sit in that recliner for years. But if you just keep sitting in that recliner, yeah, it's got 30 years are going to pass. Yeah. Do you still do some work with the computer stuff, though? Yes, I do. Okay. As he's telling me, you're still working with the computers. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, well, I still is do stuff, that can be yeah. Done? Is there anything that can be done for the medical situation, Eric? Is this a chronic pain issue? Is there a chronic pain involved here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that and uh, unemployability with uh, PTSD and uh, um, back injury, head injury and stuff like that. So it just caught Except up with the me. Army? I, I made it. Yeah. Yeah, I was from the army. Oh, is that is that did that the ideology was the army? Thank you for your service, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was yes, uh, injured you. in the army, and I was. Uh, thank you for your support. Um, yeah, so the there was an injury, um, actually a near death experience when I was eighteen, in the army, and then before that, when I was a little boy, there was some really shattering things happening. So I ended up with post-traumatic stress disorder and depression and then 25 years of working I couldn't do it anymore so they retired me medically yeah yeah is it is the VA helping Um, you at all yeah yeah they're the sole supporters social security didn't didn't want to help me oh god yeah it's it's like um quite frankly um what Eric is saying is that yes there are other things that could make you feel better, uh, but having access and the ability to actually do them. Um, so other medications, acupuncture, massage, there, you know, there's all kinds of things that could help you. Uh, for some reason, yoga, do you do any yoga? Not anymore. I, I did up until about last year. I did that in Taiji. Mm. Okay. Um, so adding these things back in, whatever you can do, um, there's this a little bit of feeling Eric is saying of kind of resigning yourself to the fact that this is what your life is going to be. And it doesn't have to be, but you're going to have to dig deep to get yourself up out mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Well, what about the so happy a technique, Eric, for him? I mean, it's so cheap and it's so easy and it handles trauma and PTSD. It has elements of EMDR, which they use for vets even. Uh, what about that? Yeah. Yeah, you need to look into that. Look into it. Look into, you know, yeah. Whatever you can do that's proactive, start doing it. It, it, It's it's, especially if if you're with channeling Eric. It's so cheap, and it's like forever, and you keep using it forever and ever and ever if you want to. But uh, twenty minutes a day for whatever, it's really profoundly amazing. Um. So do they teach the EMDR? Do, do they no, teach you how to do EMDR on yourself? Oh, or? they they do it. They yeah, you'll see, you'll see. It, it's really weird and cool. Sohappy dot com. It really is worth checking it out, and I think that could really help you. Okay. I, I remember, I remember you interviewing those two ladies, and you've mentioned this before. Yeah, yeah I'll check into it. I'll, I'll actually give check it a it shot. Out. Yeah, I. Yeah, look I at their intro. In person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you did, didn't you? Orlando. Yeah. Yeah, because we're in the we're in the same area. They're they're super nice people, and this is a, it is a really cool um, technique that they have. So definitely check it out. But they also, okay. in cases of there's some people who need to do the soul happy technique, but also need their input also. Okay, and their help. So let me know if you want me to, you know. Uh, introduce you to them and, and they can help work with you perhaps. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sure. Eric says oh, yes. You know, uh, here's a good deal. Here's a good deal. 
do the program, and then if you feel like you need further help, I can kind of ask them, hey, if Aaron, like, if, if I can interview Aaron and you guys in order to plug this and educate people about it, will you also help him with one-on-one stuff? Anyway, that's an idea. That yeah, was- channel to me, I think. <laughs> okay, Aaron. Yeah. That sounds great. Thank you. You bet, babe. All right. Uh, I don't think we have time for another call. You guys do not despair. Call in next time. If you have tried to call yeah. in multiple times, like, like, Three, four times with no luck. Uh, first of all, you're probably not calling early enough. You had to, like, get your rapid redial finger on there and, like, when it's, like, 15 before the hour, bing, punch that sucker. Or just contact me, and uh, and we'll talk. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Eric. You guys, I love you, Eric, and I love you, Jennifer. You guys can love get you. in touch with love you. Jennifer at Psychic Medium, JenniferDoran.com. All right. Love y'all. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye, everybody.